Hey guys, it's Darwin here with my full and final gear list of what I will be carrying for my 2,650 mile through hike of the PCT. All right, so after months of doing shakedown hikes and trading out gear and testing gear and doing a full through hike of the Penhody Trail, I think I finally have it dialed down and I have my final gear list and my final pack setup of what I'll be carrying for my through hike of the Pacific Crest Trail. Now, I did a series of videos called Gear for the PCT where I broke down the individual uh, categories of gear that I'm gonna be carrying in my pack. Now, a lot has changed since I put those videos out. Some gear worked, some didn't. If you wanna check those videos out, I'll put a link to each one of those in the description box below. Today, we're gonna be talking about my final starting gear list. Uh, everything that I will be starting at Campo and pretty much going north with. And then I'll be swapping out some things whenever I get to Kennedy Meadows at mile 700. Let's open it up, we'll spread it out, we'll talk about all the gear, and then at the end, I'll give you my final base weight. All right guys, let's go ahead and dive right in. First up is the pack that I'll be carrying. Uh, it's my Z-Pax Arc Blast Cuban Fiber Pack. That's the same Arc Blast that I carry on a lot of hikes. I just got done through hiking the Penhody Trail with it. And the only thing that I'm changing about the pack is if we flip it over here to the other side, you'll notice that I usually use the shoulder pouch, which that is going with me. I like to keep my phone in there and then some chapstick, uh, maybe my headphones in here. But what I've actually added to the other side of the uh, shoulder strap is a water bottle pocket. Now I picked this thing up about a year ago. Uh, it was made for me by a guy on Gear Rat Outdoor Facebook group and it holds a one liter smart water bottle. So I attached that just to have that extra water up front to be able to grab it real quick and then just for extra water storage because you know, I'll be in the desert and it will be hot. So that is the pack that I will be carrying for all 2,600 50 miles. Now let's get into the gear that is in that pack. First up is my Z-Pax Duplex Tent. Uh, that is my tent of choice, my shelter of choice, double vestibule, Cuban fiber tent. I'm sure you guys know about that tent by now. It's kind of hard not to know about that tent. And on top there are my eight titanium shepherd hook stakes, and that is in a little handmade by yours truly Cuban fiber stuff sack that I made eh, about a year ago. Sliding on over is my brand new Thermarest Z-Seat ass pad. So I lost my old one on the Penhody Trail, but that is my brand new one. And yeah, you gotta have an ass pad, so that is definitely coming with me. Next up on down is my quilt, which is an Enlightened Equipment Enigma 20. Now, for years I've been using the Revelation, and I decided to switch off of the Revelation and go with the Enigma just because I just don't find myself ever opening up my footbox anymore. And I wanted a little bit of extra warmth for the Sierras. So the new Enlightened Equipment quilts are overstuffed by I think 10 or 20%. So I just went ahead and ordered me a new Enigma. It is 10D on the outside and 7D on the inside. So super comfy and it comes in at a pretty good weight. And that is in a Z-Pax Cuban fiber roll top stuff sack. I believe that is the medium size. Um, it's the one on their website that says is good for quilts and sleeping bags. Cruising down is my Thermarest Neo Air X-Lite. That is the same sleeping pad that I have been using for quite some time now. It has a ton of miles on it. It started leaking a little bit around the valve. Um, but I did put some super glue on there to try to seal it up a little bit better. So hopefully that will last the entire trail. And that is the long version. Along with my sleeping pad, I have my Sea to Summit Eros Ultralight Pillow. I was using the Trekology Ultralight, but it actually started leaking on me. And I didn't really have time to order a new one. So I went ahead and just threw this one in my pack. I love having a pillow on the trail. And the last part of my sleep system are my Goose Feet Gear Down Socks. My feet just get really cold at night, so I like having a little bit of extra warmth, and those down socks have saved my life many a times in really cold conditions. All right, the next section is cook system and water filtration. All of this gear is currently sitting on a Z-Pax Cuban Fiber Blast food bag. That's a new one for me because I tore up my old one, and right there, is the rock bag hanging kit. There's 50 feet of Z-Line in there, a little carabiner, and that is a rock bag. Sitting next to that is my Sawyer Squeeze Regular. 
I don't like the minis, so I'm using a Sawyer Squeeze. And then the bag that I'll be using with my Sawyer Squeeze is the Knock Vecto water container. It's two liters, it has a big mouth, it has a screw top, awesome bag if you haven't checked those out yet. Next up is my Sea to Summit Spork. It's the same one I've been using for years. That is the Alpha Aluminum. It is not the Titanium. The cook pot and cold soaking jar of choice that I'm going to be carrying is the Fargo Bot 700. I just recently did a full review of that. If you want to check that out and see what I liked and what I didn't like about it, I'll put a link up in the, uh, the corner and a link in the description box below. Uh, I really like that because I don't have to switch out my cold soaking jar for my cook pot when I do want to cook eventually when I get to the Sierras. So right next to that is my BRS ultralight stove. That's the same one that I've been using for quite some time now. It only weighs 0.9 ounces, so I'm just gonna carry it the entire trail. Uh, that way, just in case, while I'm cold soaking, if I want to have hot food, all I have to do is pick up a canister and I will have a full cook system. Under that is a Bic Mini because you gotta have a way to start a fire. And last is a light load towel. Uh, I used to carry these on the trail, hadn't for a while. I'm gonna be carrying it so I can clean out my pot and my spork and it's just good to have something to wipe stuff down with every once in a while. Next up are three one liter smart water bottles and two of those have the sports caps on there. I recently did a video about my water storage system for the PCT. If you want to check that out, I kind of explain why I go with two sport caps over three. So go check that video up. And then with the three smart water bottles and the knock Vecto water bladder, that gives me a grand total of five liters of water storage through the desert. Sliding over to the right, we have my Diddy bag set up. So that is a Z-Pax Cuban Fiber Roll Top Small Diddy Bag. And then inside of there is my first aid kit, which is really just um, a hair tie, some alcohol swipes, a pair of nail clippers, some Cuban Fiber Tape, and a sewing kit. And there's also some vitamin I in there. I have an ink pen that is wrapped in Luco Tape. And Luco Tape is pretty much what I use for bandages and for covering up blisters and everything else. I have a Spiderco Salt Mini Ladybug Knife, a great little knife. It's all I ever need on the trail. A Joshua Tree SPF. 50 sun stick uh, to give my tattoos, my nose, and my ears a little bit of protection in the desert. A tube of Burt's Bees to keep those lips moisturized. A small travel toothbrush and a small travel thing of toothpaste. Next up is my Anchor 10,000 milliamp charger. It's what I use to charge my phone and my camera and my headlamp. Speaking of headlamps, that is my Yuko Air 150 rechargeable headlamp. I really like that little headlamp. Uh, there's a lot of people that don't like that headlamp, but it's worked pretty great for me. I have an iPhone 7 Plus. That's what I'm going to be using for my gut hook app and making calls and listening to music and everything else I need. And then the camera that I'm shooting with right now is the Canon G7X Mark II. And then with that camera, I have an UltraPod uh, tripod. So I wasn't going to to carry a tripod for a while as I said in a previous video but I did pick one of those up on everyone's recommendation and I dig it quite a bit. I have a small bag of electronic cords, charging block, an SD card transfer, and an extra camera battery, some extra SD cards, and some headphones kind of like my electronics catch-all bag. I have a pair of Tafosi sunglasses to make sure that I'm not getting blinded by the sun or the snow. And then last in this row is my Tent Lab Deuce of Spades Trowel, and under that is a roll of shit tickets. So shit tickets because, you know, you gotta do your business, and the trowel because if you're gonna do your business, practice good leave no trace principles. Sliding over is my thermal jacket of choice, which is the Enlightened Equipment Torrid Apex. That is a synthetic jacket, not a down jacket. It is hooded and that is a 7D material. Cruising down is my Z-Pax Virtus rain jacket. I can't wait to give you guys a review on it. It has been treating me very well. Super lightweight, has pit vents, hood. It is the full package and it's an awesome jacket. Next to that jacket are my Enlightened Equipment copper-filled wind pants and those are the 7D version. Super light pants. Pretty much just carrying those to have a little bit of extra coverage from the wind. And then the last thing in this row are my Z-Pax Virtus rain mitts. Now, I don't really use those for rain. I use them as a shell and an extra layer over my regular gloves in case it's really cold. And the regular gloves that I use are the Outdoor Research liner gloves. These are just kind of the cheap liner gloves. There's nothing special about them. They're not merino wool or anything. 
but those paired with the Virtus rain mitts makes a pretty good combination and keeps my hands really warm on the trail. Next up is a pair of Darn Tough Crew Length Merino Wool Socks. I do have two pairs of those, one pair in my pack and one pair on my feet. It is my sock of choice and I think it is the best hiking sock. I have my hand knitted beanie that I've had for many a year. Uh, I typically carry my outdoor research down beanie. Even though it's lighter, I really like my knit beanie and I don't know, I just want to take it on this trail. It is adding a little bit of weight, I think like an ounce, which really isn't much weight at all. But yeah, I like it. It's near and dear to my heart, so it's going to come with me on this hike. I have my main leg coverings of choice, which are the Nike Pro Hyper Warm Tights. That is my second pair of these. The first pair that I had, I had close to 3,000 miles on and a ton of running and I had had them for years and finally the stitching just started coming out uh, on the inseam so I did pick up a new pair. I love those things. Sometimes I sleep in them, I hike in them a lot. Uh, gotta have tights if you're doing a long distance hike because, you know, pants suck. And then last in the row is my Icebreaker Merino Wool t-shirt. I pretty much just use that as a camp shirt, something to switch into at night something to sleep in, and then good for town. And then the last two things that I actually include in my base weight are pretty much just sun protection. I might be getting rid of some of them when I get to Kennedy Meadows, um, or I might just carry them all the way through the Sierras. First up is my Six Moons Design Silver Shadow Solar Umbrella. And then under that are my Outdoor Research Sun Gloves. Those are the active ice ones, uh, just to make sure my hands don't burn in the desert because I do use trekking poles. So yeah, keep those hands safe and sunburnt free. All right, so all of that gear makes up my main base weight. Um, and then the last bit of gear is all the things that I have on me. So. It's the clothes and trekking poles that I will be wearing the entire trail, so I never include those in my base weight. Up here is my favorite hiking shirt of choice, which is the Columbia Silver Ridge Light long sleeve shirt. I have my Nike Pro running shorts. Um, those are the pocketed version. Next to those are my new UV buff. It looks just like my old buff, but it is UV protection, so that'll be good for the desert. Sliding on down are my hiking shoe of choice, which are the Ultra Lone Peak 3.5s. I shouldn't have to say much about these shoes. I think they're kind of everyone's shoe of choice right now. And inside of there are a pair of Superfeet Flex insoles because I like a little bit of support. And then what I use with them are the Dirty Girl Gators. Those are the same gators that I always use. Um, yeah, Dirty Girls, awesome, gotta have them. On up is, of course, I have got to wear a mesh back hat, and I'm gonna wear my Arizona Trail hat. I was gonna wear my AT one, but nah, I think the Arizona Trail one is a lot better for the PCT, so that will be on top of my dome all the way until Canada. And then the last piece of gear are my trekking poles, which are the Knock Outdoor Carbon Vertex Cork Poles. They're a great trekking pole, they're good and light, they break down really nice, and they also set up my tent. So they do double as tent poles, and wrapped around there I have some duct tape so I can repair gear if needed. All right, so that is it. That is everything that I will be starting from the Mexico border with and heading north. Like I said, there are a few things that I'm going to be swapping out when I get to Kennedy Meadows at about mile 700. I'll be getting rid of some of the desert protection and then picking up things like an ice axe, crampons, and possibly a bear canister. I don't know exactly when I'm going to pick up my bear canister. I might pick it up at Kennedy Meadows. I might wait a little bit longer because I heard that you don't have to pick it up from Kennedy Meadows. So we'll see when I get there. Now my overall base weight, and that is without food, water, my trekking poles, or the clothes that are on my back, is coming in at 12 pounds, five ounces. So 12 pounds, five ounces isn't too shabby. I wanted to go a little bit lighter, but with adding that extra desert protection and good camera equipment to be able to make good videos for you guys, uh, it's worth it. So I'm pretty happy with that. Again, it'll get a little bit heavier sometimes, it'll get a little bit lighter other times, but that is my starting base weight. I'm super excited to get out there. I hope you guys follow along with my weekly PCT videos, and I'll see you on the trail. If you haven't had a chance yet, go over and check me out on Instagram. I've been posting a lot of new photos throughout the week, plus I'll be trying to post a picture a day from the PCT as long as I have signal. If you found any value in this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.